Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair and another video sponsored by PCBWay.com and of course with my friend Detlef. Hi guys. Hi. So, we finished the last video, if you guys watched that, we had a look at two projects which we completed and we mentioned there was something else in the box from PCBWay.com. Yes, anger. Yeah, and what <laughs> we have are these. So, you can see these PCBs here. Single-sided effective, well, double-sided tracks, but single-sided components. Okay, and if we just tilt this into the light, you'll see what they've done. Oh, there's writing. There's writing, but this is not writing in the silk screen. This is writing, actually, copper. This is on the copper layer. On the copper layer, and let's see if we can just get it where you can see it. If this is a design choice, it's a weird one. It certainly is. So I actually yeah. ordered these as a shared project. I'm going to show you the shared project shortly on PCBWay.com. And I just went with the default settings. So this is mm -hmm. Arduino Nano. So this is an Arduino-based project. And this is an ultra-precise milliometer. Curious mm -hmm. Science 2021. And that's what we have. And we're going to build this as one of our next upcoming projects. But just before that, I want to show you another one that we've actually completed now. Let's go. And this is the RF frequency generator, which we converted to rechargeable battery power. Yep. And we No leads attached. No leads attached. So we now have this all together in the case. This was already available as a shared project. We made these panels from PCB material, so from PCBWay.com. We just designed these. I've added the Gerber files to the original shared file again mm. on my Google Drive. So if you want, you can actually download the Gerbers for these. But bear in mind, we made these to fit this particular case. But if they're any use to you, you can have the Gerber files, no problem. Sure. Um, again, keep in mind, this is made for this specific case. Rebuildability wasn't the... The, the thing in here, yeah. Yeah, one thing we can say, we have the cut out the right size for the display there, so yeah. it may save you some work if you want to do yeah. something similar. Yeah. If we want to check, it, check out how we did this, this is more an educational thing, I think. Yeah, we can link the video. Yeah. We'll just show you, so this is 15 centimeters by four. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice this is like, outside of the case so the original thing which was like some sort of uh, video switch was mm. like this the rear panel was recessed so you actually see the rear panel is actually slightly smaller yeah oh we got this yeah on top this is standing on its head it is so yeah. the, that is actually slightly smaller because it's recessed but anyway if these are any use to you the gerber files are now on my google drive in the link which I'll put in the description yep. to this video. But it's the same link as the previous one on here. Okay, I just wanna show you this thing actually does work. So you can see on the scope there, it's actually working if I change the frequency. Yeah. To a different Neat. frequency band. Yeah. yeah, and I can actually adjust the frequency. So that is actually working guys, okay. The generator does change in amplitude. I'm at 13 meg now. That's at 14 meg. We knew this anyway from the original build. But this is a very cheap generator. You can build this just for a few dollars. And this goes up to 225 megahertz. So that is another project nicely finished. And since it's running now from battery power, you don't have any uh, ground connection. Correct. So this is now isolated. Yeah. We may see this again. I was talking to Tim of Tim's mm. hardware projects. He has some different firmware for this, and we were also looking to see if we could add some features to this, like frequency modulation, amplitude modulation. But that's kind of like on the back burner at the moment. But you guys, let me know what you think about that. And back to this ultra-precise milliometer. This actually came from a bit of a discussion between Depp and myself, probably over a beer, I would imagine. And those of you with long memories may recall that I actually built from PCBWay.com a shared project for a milliometer. Again, I'll just add that link to the description here. I'll just show you briefly now mm -hmm. the project which I built on PCBWay.com. And here you can see the milliometer project that I built. This is the shared project on PCBWay.com. You can order your PCBs from here, of course. 
This is a video that the original author made, which was in Portuguese, I seem to recall. And we see here the actual schematic. So this basically uses a voltage reference. We can see here, one op amp driving a MOSFET. And this is a very accurate constant current source. You can see there, very simple, but accurate. So it passes a constant current through the two Kelvin probes, and then the other wires on the Kelvin probes sense the voltage drop across the resistor that you're measuring through another op amp. I seem to recall the gain of this circuit was times 10, and that drives the meter here, okay? This small potentiometer here, little trimmer pot, is to zero the milliometer. I'll link the videos I made regarding this project in the video description to this one. If you're interested in building this or learning more about it, then you'll find everything you need to know there. So this one actually is very, very accurate. I have a Vici VC480. This is like a hundred euro, wow, practically right. milliometer. And the project I built is at least as accurate as this from what we've seen. This actually runs from mains, I'll just show you in a moment. So mains transformer. This little piece of Vero board is just the voltage regulators. Plus and minus 15 this runs at. This is the PCB way project. So this is just two op amps, OP07. Very simple. No brains in here, no microcontroller. Just a little display, five digit display I got from AliExpress. Okay, so we just plug this into the mains, switch it on. Okay, so this you can see now is effectively open circuit. If deck can just hold that there a second. I think I can. Okay, so if I, these are my homemade Kelvin probes out of just voltage tweezers basically. And if I short these together, you will see that this one actually auto zeros. Just takes a few seconds, it'll come down to zero and it'll stop. Okay. Clever design. Very clever, look, zeros. Look, still touching together. It auto zeros, it's not carrying mm -hmm. into the negative, okay. And that's the same resolution as this one, okay. Here we have a resistance shunt. So I can show you on the Vici how well this works. This is on the 20 milliohms range. I think this is a five milliohm shunt, we'll find out. So let's have a look. Yeah, it reads about five milliohms. Okay, just a bit under. Let's try the one I built from the PCB Way project. And here we have the PCB Way project. So you can see, just check again. This is zeroed. Let's try the shunt. And that you can see is reading about 3.54. Okay. So we're very similar reading, really. That shows this is pretty much as good as the other one, especially for things like fault finding. So the discussion went one day that this very simple thing with two op amps, and you can see how it's working, is very accurate, and I'd found a project for one using an Arduino. And Detlef, do you think a microcontroller can do any better than two op amps? Well, since this is already very good, this would be a challenge, yeah? Yeah. And uh, you can't beat the uh, low component in here. The, the, it's this easy design in here, because with a microcontroller, I always have to do software. So uh, from a development point of view, if this works, you know? Yeah, it does make you wonder, but the project on PCBWay, which we'll show you now, has the software, mm, okay. the source code, the schematic. So let's have a look now at the Arduino-based version, which we are going to build, okay. to find out whether it's any better than this. Mm. And here we are back on PCBWay.com, and this is the project we want to build. And we can have a look at the project here, so we can see the PCBs, which we already have. Mm -hmm a bill of materials oh yeah this looks complete <laughs> yeah there's certainly a lot here i'll show you the schematic so if we look at the schematic this is actually very similar to the other one so again mm -hmm. we have 
a constant current source, which is mm -hmm. the top part of it. So this is generating a current, but this is using very close tolerance resistors and this special little chip here to generate the current. And then we have the sense side again, which effectively is converting that back into a reading. So this uses looks like an ADC here. Sense, yeah, sense in out. So this is very similar thing, exactly the same principle. We send a known current through the resistor we want to test and we measure the voltage across it using different wires. The reason for the different wires is so that no matter what the current is, there's no voltage drop on these wires because no current really flows this way. This is effectively an op amp input, so infinite or close impedance. Mm -hmm. So that's the actual schematic, basically the same or very similar. The Arduino doesn't do much, right? No, the Arduino actually goes over here somewhere by the looks of it. This is the Arduino. Oh, I see. I, I saw to see display. I see. Okay, this is probably only decoding the thing and uh, getting all this data via some. Oh, I see SDO. SDA SCL. Yeah, uh, so probably I squared C somewhere and uh, SDI bus somewhere. Yeah. Chip select, SDO, yeah, must be something like that. Okay, well, we can look at the source code in mm. a minute, but let's have a look <laughs> at the actual bill of materials for this. Yeah, and guys, this is something you really want to look for. If you want to build any project, uh, have a look if it's complete. The worst thing that could happen to you, you order the PCBs and you realize, okay, source code is missing or bill of materials isn't there and no silk screen printing and then you... Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have here a list of all the parts. There's some very strange parts here that we've never seen before, to be quite honest. Some unusual chips. And also, if you look through here, we have a lot of 0.1% resistors. Let's have a quick look at the source code as well. Mm -hmm. I've put you on the spot here, Dad. Have a quick look. <laughs> See if you can figure anything out, basically, from this. Let me scroll here. So uh, I haven't seen this one before. Oh yeah, look at this for the ADC SPI begin. So it does some initialization for the ADC thingamajig. This is just for debugging, for display. So he has a SSD 1305 on there. So uh -huh. we have to look for the right right chip type for the display here. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if we don't if we don't get the thing right, we don't won't see anything. Oh, the pinouts will be wrong. Yeah, and the uh, controller chip is the SSD 1305. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is just, if you want to hack the thing and put something else on there, this is your point. Some delay, la 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 la, calculate resistance, print OLED, calculate voltage, read ADC. Read ADC. Oh yeah, look at this, he's doing all the reading. Oh yeah, he's doing this SPI transfer thing. Uh -huh. So this won't use any libraries. So uh, okay, you probably go for this the display, probably use the library, but this is pretty, yep. Yep. It looks com looks looks fine. Okay. And it's well documented, you see that? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we have that, guys, to go with. Now, the main thing we were talking about this is the precision of a lot of these components. Mm -hmm. And we thought it would be a very good idea, A, I will price this project up to see how much it would cost mm. to build, and B, we would try ordering this off PCB way as an assembled project. That should be okay because the author has already created the bill of materials for True. us. So PCB way should have all the information they need. All we need mm -hmm. to do is just to order the project built and then we'll give us a quote and we'll find out yeah, how no, much. No, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And for, you know, these weird, I have no idea what then, this is probably a yeah, voltage converter, of course, and uh, micro precision sound for it. I don't have these parts lying around. You probably either. No, no. Yeah. So uh, with PCB way here, you can do the, all the outs the all the sourcing materials part to them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Them, yeah, exactly. Uh, and you don't have to ma mess around with maybe fake parts from China or something. Of course, you're getting the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So guys, then that's the challenge. Which is the best? I'll have to order the parts for this one. So it'll probably be a month before I get this one in some sort of state where we can try it. In the meantime, by the way, those of you who've been following, we also had the C210 and C245 solder line project. That is actually built, apart from I ordered the wrong socket for the soldering <laughs> iron. We do have some update on this, but we're gonna tell you next time. So we can tell you that project, although we have no source code, does appear to function as best we can tell at the moment. Let's hope. Let's well, hope the best. That's really well, let's hope, hope the best. Yep. But it doesn't just sit there dead. What? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, guys, so until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you to PCBWay.com for sponsoring these videos. And we look forward to hearing from you all down there. Ciao for now, Ciao guys. Ciao for now, guys. <laughs>